The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by... You're in a Bojangles town, Greenville, home of the Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's boat time. Bojangles, the title sponsor for the Frankie DeBus Show. Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, home of the big deal, located on the 11E Bypass in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Greenville Federal Bank, celebrating over 50 years of service in Greenville and Green County. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. It was the 10th meeting all time between the Tusculum Pioneers and the Brevard Tornadoes. And there must have been a storm that swept through Brevard, North Carolina. The Pioneers commit five turnovers, and Brevard turns those five turnovers into 24 points as they defeat the Tusculum Pioneers by a final of 52 to 33. The loss spoils a record-breaking day for Justin Houston, who establishes three single-game records for the Tusculum Pioneers in the contest, and Bo Cordell steps ever closer to breaking the all-time Division II total offensive yard mark. We'll talk about that with Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus when we return after this. This is the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory flavored smoked sausage on a made from scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's bow time. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at at home of the big deal .com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. The Pioneers fall to Brevard this past Saturday. It was the 10th meeting between the two schools. An interesting stat, Brevard and now has won three consecutive games at home against the Tusculum Pioneers. But another interesting stat, whatever Paul Hamilton does with his seniors seems to work because it was senior day for the Tornadoes. And they haven't lost a senior day about the last four years. And that's including a win last season against the Newberry Wolves. So, would it have been an upset? I don't know. On this particular day, both teams played pretty hard. Touch Gillum just had some miscues. Joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. And coach, I'll say there are two great equalizers in the game of college football, weather and turnovers. Weather was a lot colder than we have played in this year, but we can't have the five turnovers that we have either. No, Brian, if we eliminate those five turnovers, it's a completely different ball game. And <clears throat> we didn't play air free defensively by no stretch, but uh, you know, they didn't put it on the ground any. There was one fumble, and they actually fumbled it out of bounds. But uh, I said going over there that uh, hopefully we would do what we needed to do offensively and defensively, and if we didn't turn the ball over, we'd have a great chance of winning the ball game. And uh, ultimately, if you give a team five turnovers, it really didn't matter who you're playing, you're probably not going to win. And we just couldn't overcome it. And, you know, I'll tell you what, they played exceptionally hard, had a lot of emotion uh, as a coach. 
you like seeing kids get after it and have fun like they were doing, but just wish it would have been on for the orange and black team instead of the blue team on Saturday. And the Pioneers didn't have that type of luck. Jordan Aulis accounts for five touchdowns in the game. The Pioneers turned it over five times. Seemed to have been a key day. But as you'll see as we take a look at your first half highlights presented by Bojangles, the Tusculum Pioneers didn't have problems scoring when they got two when they had the football and held on to it. Yeah, I tell you, Brian, our, uh, our uh, offensive football team, you know, we, we didn't punt on the day. So if you don't punt the football, it generally means you're having success. Unfortunately, we didn't punt it because we were either scoring, which was a good thing, or turning the ball over. And you know, we start the game off, and we're handing it to Isaac Robinson, a freshman who's just had a great year for us, and throwing it out there to Justin Houston, who's had an unbelievable year for us. Uh, you know, we've we've not done everything error-free offense. I mean, we didn't play great on offense Saturday, but, uh, you know, we, we cannot afford to turn over. This is a great decision by Bo, and you know, we got a young man there that's got to catch the football. I mean, he wants opportunities. We throw him the ball. He's got to make catches like this. This is an unbelievable catch. I um, mean, that's Justin Houston just giving it everything he's got, stretching out there, and wow, what a catch. He's just had a really, really good year, and he's a great kid from Bradley Central High School down in Cleveland, Tennessee. And, I actually recruited his high school coach when I was at Chattanooga, so I'm, I'm glad he's having some success. So Justin Houston with the 44-yard reception. Again, that one came on third down, and then Isaac Robinson will punch it in for the first of his two touchdowns on the day. And the Tusculum Pioneers have equalized as Brevard had the ball to start the game, and they went down and in 11 plays, 61 yards, held on to it six and a half minutes, and they scored. Tusculum's eight-play, 71-yard drive took a minute 59. We'll see a little bit of the effort by the Pioneers here today defensively, but it just shows you when Brevard has just a little bit of a miscue, it throws off the timing just this much, and Josh Davis is quick enough to be in the backfield. Yeah, we needed a few of those plays, Brian. I mean, that was a great play by Josh. Josh is a senior from Atlanta, and I'm happy he's getting an opportunity to make that play. And, you know, here we're, uh, we're, we're flying around, and I don't know, I think that's Cam Thomas, a freshman from up in Kentucky, and hold him to a field goal. We send in Big West Powell, our 6'10 tight end, who blocks the kick, and Ball's floating around there. I think uh, I don't remember who picks it up. I think it might have been Cam. I know Dustin Lane's trying to pick it up there and we end up getting in the arms. Maybe that's Evan Dansby who returns it for a little bit. But you know, we stop them defensively. Just a great job there to keep them from getting points on the board. And you know, it's it's a battle back and forth. And now we're in the second quarter, and we're, we're you know we just got to make some plays. And unfortunately, here we uh, we bobble this ball. I think it was tipped, and then Dion tipped it and an opportunity to catch it, but it would have been a hard catch. We still got to make, make good decisions and make catches. Can't give them the ball there. Devin Holmes with the interception. That would be he would factor prominently in this game as well. It would lead to a field goal of 27 yards, and Brevard would take a 10-7 lead. And that, that was eight plays, 35 yards. Took four and a half minutes for them to score. And then something you just don't see very often from Justin Houston. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's had a great year. And unfortunately there, we give him a field goal. They kick it to us, and we fumble it. I, don't, I think that's probably the first time all year Justin's put it on the ground. And uh, again, we got kids just trying so hard right now. And, and unfortunately, Brian, when you're in a situation where you're in, you're, you're, you're feeling like you got to do everything just perfect. And that's uh, it's unfortunate. We're out there trying to play a game and win a ball game, but here we, we do turn it over and we'll give it to, give them the football there on the 30 yard line. And, we're having trouble stopping them. You sure don't need to give them the ball again on the 30-yard line. As Brevard would take it six plays, go 30 yards in two minutes and 33 seconds. You see the dejection. I put that in there just to see it because you could see it right there for that team. So it's all of a sudden 17-7. to seven. You get the ball in the ensuing drive, and Bo Cordell goes to work as he finds Fernando Smith. That's his only catch of the day, but Fernando was very good between the tackles with the ball in his hands. Good throw and catch here from, from Bo to Dion. And, you know, uh, we're, we're executing, we're doing what we need to do. We hand it off here again to Fernando, who's another freshman that's just battling and doing what we are asking him to do. We feel pretty good about that running back position here. We throw it to Justin, I think it is, and, and convert on third down, give us a, a good first down. We throw it back to him over there, and he gets five or six more. I mean, things are happening really positive for us. We just got to keep moving the football. As the Pioneers continue to move again down 10 points, Justin Houston will factor with 12 catches on the day, 193 yards, and then Fernando Smith, nowhere to go to the right, just heads over to the left, picks up five yards, second down and five. And some of those numbers, again, for, for Justin Houston, here's Kenny Funny, one of his, uh, his, one of his two catches on the afternoon. Uh, this Pioneer football team, Fernando Smith on third down, will pick up the first down here. And you, you're, things are going downhill. You're moving efficiently right now in this football Absolutely. game. Absolutely. We're running the football when we need to, throwing it when we need to. We're executing and doing some, some good things. And you know, we got guys making plays. And of course, we're not going to play 100% perfect. There's a little ball thrown a little behind Justin, but end up handed off to, to Isaac here, who gets five or six for us. And 
I think now we're in third and six or seven. And if I remember correctly, this is when Bo has all day long and trying to make a good decision here and unfortunately throws it out of the back of the end zone. And I think he had Wes a little bit earlier there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we go for it on, on fourth down and you know, we're, we're back in that mode. We, we can't afford to give them the football and we got to execute offensively. Bo Cordell, 31 of 51 on the day. This is fourth down and eight. Actually taking a timeout here. Brevard took a timeout. They weren't quite set up defensively. And yeah, Cordell has uh, all day. And Justin Houston finally opens up. Can't stay on his feet, but it moves the chains. First and 10, Diliberto with the four yard catch. Thought he may score here, but was kept just out of the end zone. The Pioneers pound away with Fernando Smith. That's his first touchdown in four games. He hadn't scored since the Catawba game, was among the league leaders in scoring his eighth touchdown of the year. Great execution there offensively. Great protection there by the offensive line on fourth down. And <clears throat> good job by Bo not getting excited. And <clears throat> Justin continued to work to get open and throwing and catching. And then we're going to hit Dilberto over there and get four or five and end up punching in the end zone. Still feeling really good about things. We've got Brevard in a throwing situation here. And uh, I think that's Ira Macon doing a good job covering down the field. And, and we're, we're doing some really good things. We just got to keep playing football. Force Brevard to punt, and Justin Houston just showing his ability. The Pioneers have missed the point after, so it's 17 to 13 right now as we view the game. Late in the second quarter, and Justin just makes guys miss. 12 catches, 193 yards. That's the fourth most yards in a game in school history. His 12 catches nowhere near his school rec his record that he has uh, held on to, but more in the, on that in a moment because he has come up with some phenomenal numbers at the end of the game. This ball floats. It's a windy day in western North Carolina. It's supposed to be sunny and 60, and Bo is picked off for the second time in the half. Well, we were throwing it up for grabs there. We did some things that shot ourselves in the foot and had to make some decisions what we wanted to do, whether we wanted to take a knee or give it a shot. And in that situation, we might as well throw it up. It wasn't a very good ball, but we, we you know, that's that's one of those turnovers really that you don't count. We still had five, right. but um, that's, that's one that you're just sort of taking a chance on. Bad things usually happen. Pioneers are going to have the football to start the second half as well. So trying to take advantage at the end of the half with some field position. Again, they really weren't stopped. They stopped themselves in that first half. Let's see if that would carry over to the second half as well. That's when we come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory flavored smoked sausage on a made from scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's bo time. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. So Cornelius will attempt a 41 yard effort to kick his away, end over end toward the upright, and he splits them. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. At the half, it's somewhat of a low-scoring game, where Brevard leading the Pioneers 17-13, to but the Pioneers will have the football to start the second half. Coach, I'm sure in the locker room, you're sitting there thinking, all right, we've given it away, we've thrown it away a couple of times, some slight adjustments. How was the feeling coming out at the, into the second half? Uh, you know, I, I knew we were being a battle in the situation we're in, <clears throat> both teams, and 17-13 at the half, and we were getting the ball back, and... You know, they hadn't really stopped us. I felt like we'd go down the field and have an opportunity to score, and that's what we told the team. And, you know, the, the, the demeanor was pretty good. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're in a situation we are as a football team, you're, you're sort of looking around trying to find some answers. But at halftime, being that we were in the ball game and had done some good and bad things, we were fine. We just had to go out and execute for two more quarters. Let's take a look at it. Coming up, the Pioneers with the football. They'll have it inside the 10-yard line. Our second half highlights presented by Bojangles. Pioneers down 17-13 to 13, have methodically moved the football First and goal from, I think it's about the six-yard line for the Pioneers as we pick it up. The wind at your back, Coach, did you feel you had to take advantage with the wind at your back? Well, we just felt like we, we, we'd moved the ball down the field and we needed to get a thing in a dead gum end zone. And, you know, we, we put ourselves in a tough situation here and end up, I think, throwing this one to, to over here to Matt. And, you know, Matt's got to go up and make this catch. It actually, you know, it's not a great ball, but it's up for grabs. It goes through his hands. and. And then we got to make the dead gum field goal. I mean, we've we've done what we wanted to do. We've driven all the way down the field, and, and we're feeling pretty good about things. And we just got to make the kick. It's unacceptable, and 
we can't be inside the five yard line and not score, and then we can't be inside the five yard line and miss a field goal. We've got to do better offensively. We've got to do better kicking the football. So Brevard will have the football and a takeover, and this is really with the defense playing good. Wayne Solei there with the tackle. 15 tackles on the afternoon for Wayne, one of his most his best games in a Pioneer uniform, and then Kevin Herbst runs into Dustin Lang. Yeah, we we're, we got a little life right now. I mean, we've we've moved the ball down the field. We didn't score, but we got a little life and. Defensively, we're really playing hard. I think this is when we've held them and made them punt it to us and didn't do that much. And then we start handing the ball off to Isaac, who just starts sort of taking over. We've uh, got a little scheme going there. We hit Dion here and gets upfield and tries to get us three or four yards. They've, they made a good play there. And then we hand it off to Isaac. I think this is the one he goes about 40-some yards on. I thought he had scored, but uh, he's got to get this thing on in the end zone. But a great run by him. Isaac Robinson, again, nine carries, 81 yards. This is his career long, 39 yards officially. Takes it down to the five yard line for the Pioneers on this drive. It takes them four plays, 56 yards, and all of it for Isaac Robinson, with the exception of a yard reception for Deion Hicks. Robinson caps it, gets into the end zone. The Pioneers take a 20 to 17 lead with the point after goods, the second touchdown for Robinson. And that sideline feeling a lot better about themselves. Uh, First we, lead of the day. We've got a little life, Brian. We've got the lead. We're, uh, we've made some plays. We've done some good things. We end up, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're playing pretty good. And dang, if we don't put it on the ground, I don't know that Bo Cordell has fumbled all year. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he gets hit there and ball squirts out. And, you know, we feel a little deflated. Bioneers are trailing right now in the game 24 to 20. That fumble by Bo Cordell would lead to yet another touchdown for Brevard. We move into the fourth quarter. The Pioneers right now down 31 to 20. That's right. The Pioneers had 21 unanswered for Brevard after two back-to-back -back miscues. Some penalties on the drive after the Pioneers took the lead. But on this particular drive, Pioneers, obviously, uh, you're feeling really good about yourself. Justin Houston looks real good uh, in in. Space makes a couple of guys look pretty bad, takes it 18 yards to the end zone. Great effort there by Justin. Good job blocking by our linemen, getting downfield. And, you know, the game's by no st stretch of imagination over. We just got to keep playing. <laughs> that may have been the hardest hit Justin took on that drive. A couple of guys, Houston, nine catches for or nine yards on a couple of catches. Fernando Smith, a nine yard run. Fernando Smith, a seven yard run. Pioneers trail. 38-26, the ensuing possession, a long kickoff return for Brevard, sets up short field for them. They make lead at 45-26. to The Pioneers get it. Wes Powell for 9 yards, Justin Houston for 11 yards. Bo Cordell starting to get under some pressure, but again, he's trying to be perfect right now on this particular drive in your comeback bid. That's where we are, Brian, right now, just trying to do everything exactly right. And, you know, we've, uh, we've made some mistakes along the way. We've dealt ourselves some bad cards and it's tough when you get in this situation and, and Justin continues to make plays, but you know, a little too late here. We've got to play better than we played early on. Justin Houston on the day with that catch, finished with 12 catches, 193 yards, fourth in school history, 122 yards on six kickoff returns. He also had a two-yard uh, two yard rush in the football game, so he smashes a single-season game record. We'll get to that here in just a moment. Uh, as Corliss Stone with the catch for 11 yards, Bo Cordell rolling the pocket. He had Deion Hicks uh, much of the afternoon uh, if he ever wanted him, and he finally gets one to him but a little bit too late. Brevard would actually tap on, tack on another one at the end of the contest. Pioneers would go for two. The Pioneers would fall by a final of 52 to 33. And that, that record that I was talking about, uh, three, he made 99 catches on the year, not in the game. That would be some type of a record. 1,186 yards. Now that breaks Deontay Gist's old record where he had 96 catches for 1,183 yards. No Pioneer has ever had 100 receptions in a season. Justin Houston has one more game to establish that. He smashed the all-purpose yardage record in a season, 1,753 yards. Deontay Gist just three years ago, 1,713 yards on the afternoon. Quarterback Bo Cordell with 332 yards passing. He also ran for 41 yards. That leaves him roughly 180 yards shy of the total offensive yard record held by Jimmy Terwilliger, which was established in 2006. So Bo Cordell has a chance to do that, barring any type of a setback uh, this Saturday against Mars Hill. And the running backs were great, Coach. Uh, you got great production out of that. I mean, when you can get 170 yards rushing and Bo Cordell can throw for over 300, you're thinking – that really should be a win, but man, a lot of the, the turnovers were the great equalizer. Well, that was it. I mean, they didn't put it on the ground or fumble it. You know, again, we didn't get it from them any, and they got it from us five times, and you can eliminate one of those, but we still had four turnovers, and you're not going to beat anybody that, uh, when you turn the ball over four times and 
We didn't play great defensively, but my goodness, we were our backs were against the wall so many times, and we had to make so be so perfect, and it just didn't happen. I mean, they Brevard won the ball game, rightfully so, and uh, they were better than we were on Saturday. It's different. Uh, Tanner Wright was the starting quarterback for Brevard much of the season. Now they're asking Kevin Herbst, just a freshman, to come in. Didn't look comfortable throwing the football, but you can tell when things start going well. He threw a much better ball later in the game. Yeah, we we let one go. We turned one loose a couple of times, and. You know, I mean, Brian, we had, a, we had a guy just fall down one time on coverage and they scored a touchdown. And it's back to the kids are trying so hard right now. I mean, we, we, actually, we actually ran to the ball really well defensively. We, you know, we always we have to talk about loafs on Sunday night and we didn't have a very, very few. You know, they're still playing really hard. And I really believe we're a better football team than we were last year. It's not going to show that in that left column where you put those W's. But... You know, we've made some strides and we got some good players. We, it's just really hard right now to try to keep our kids going. It's a difficult time right now for the Pioneers as they fall to Brevard. They end their conference season now. Uh, three wins overall in the year, two wins in the conference, and they'll travel next week and take on the Liberty Flames. Meanwhile, for the Pioneers, looking for that fourth win of the season as they'll take on a Mars Hill Lions team that just comes off a big win against Wingate this past Saturday. And we'll talk about that when we return in a few moments with Coach DeBus. But coming up next, it's time for our player profile, the player spotlight. That's when we return after this. It's the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. That's a wrap, Scotty. Let's break for lunch, guys. All right, it's boat time. All right. Cajun filet sandwich. Right here. Hey, I had a Cajun filet sandwich. Hey, relax, man. We got more. Smoked sausage biscuit. That's me. But you have a Cajun filet sandwich. So what's your point? Man, you can't have breakfast and lunch together. That doesn't work. Works for me. I call it brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Head to Bojangles and try our seasoned hickory-flavored smoked sausage on a made-from-scratch biscuit for just 99 cents. Bojangles, it's boat time. You are Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBun Show. The Pioneers fall to the Brevard Tornadoes. Take a look at our Players of the Week. We'll start offensively with our Sodexo Offensive Players of the Week. Isaac Robinson, again the freshman from Palmyra, Virginia. Hargrave Military out of Monticello High School. Just having a stellar season for the Pioneers. Just nine carries, 81 yards, two touchdowns with a new career long of 39. Averaged nine yards per carry every time he touched it. He also had five catches for 31 yards. Now on the season, 90 carries, 549 yards and eight touchdowns, 23 receptions and 153 yards. From the offensive line, Patrick Benson, redshirt freshman out of Cleveland, Tennessee, Bradley Central High School. Outstanding on the offensive line work. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Players of the Week, Wayne Soliot, a junior out of Riverside, California, from North Vista High School, finished with the career best 15 tackles in the game, including a tackle for loss. Now on the season, finishing with 60 tackles, three for loss, and an interception. Going into the contest, he was 39th in the league, averaging five tackles per game. Rocky Jones, the junior from Anderson, South Carolina, from Westside High School, finished the day with five tackles for his career at Tusculum, 69 tackles, two for loss, and a fumble recovery. Our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Player of the Week is Wes Powell, big six foot ten junior out of Titus, Alabama, from Elmore County High School, finished with a field goal block in the game for the game as well with the catch for nine yards. On the season, Wes is third in the on the team with 31 receptions, fourth with 410 yards, and four touchdowns in the game. Our Andrew Johnson Bank called the game. First drive. It was Bo Cordell to Justin Houston. Cordell looking, looking, and looking to go deep to Houston. Caught it on the three-yard line, goes down at the two. Cordell had all day to throw it. Justin Houston made another remarkable catch. It's first and goal. It's time now for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. In the contest for the Pioneers, numbers will say the Pioneers dominated the contest. 29 first downs to Brevard's 22. 170 rushing yards for the Pioneers. Brevard 16th in the nation, finished with 303 rushing yards on the day. Tusculum threw for 332 yards. Brevard for 78. Bo Cordell was 31 of 51. The three picks did not help matters, but did finish with two touchdowns on the day. 
of uh, Mr. Herbst was four of five on the afternoon for Brevard. Tusculum average gain per play, 6.4 yards with 502 total offensive yards to Brevard's 381. Penalties, not much of a factor in the contest it was the turnovers. Tusculum penalized seven times for 95 yards. The fewest penalized team in the league is Brevard, finished with just three penalties for 32 yards on the day. Time of possession, expect it from a running team. Brevard, 39 minutes and 57 seconds. Tusculum, 33 points, held the ball just 20 minutes and three seconds. Tusculum, 9 of 12 on third downs. Brevard, 9 of 14. And in the red zone, Tusculum, 4 for 5. Brevard, 8 of 9. Pioneers fall to the Brevard Tornadoes. We talk about Mars Hill the season finale when we come back with Pioneer coach Frankie DeBunch right after this as you listen to the Frankie DeBunch Show presented by Bojangles. Creekside Market has three locations in southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway. Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy is at Grand Rental Station. Business, commercial, or residential. From forklifts to backhoes to tents, party goods, wedding supplies, and much more. On the Andrew Johnson Highway in Greenville. Grand Rental Station, 639-6160. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tunsculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Whenever there's a project to make our community a better place to live, you'll always find our local merchants right there doing all they can to help. From sponsoring the kids' ball teams to serving barbecue at a community picnic, they're always there. Be community-minded. Shop and invest locally. Greenville Federal Bank, member FDIC. Banking made easy. Community-minded, just like you. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Bojangles. Pioneers fall this past Saturday to Brevard. We're all about ready to turn the page there, but one more record, Justin Houston in the game. Uh, talked about his single season records that he has broken, and yes, that's three of them, but he also established a new game record with 317 all-purpose yards. Last time it was established was against this Brevard team, and it was actually last year when Xavion Smith returned two kickoff returns for touchdowns and also had over 100 yards receiving on the day. But on this day, Justin Houston's 317 all-purpose yards breaks the previous mark held by X of 311 yards established in the game in 2012 against Brevard. We turn the page, Mars Hill, Tim Clifton, you know, this is a traditional end-of-the-year game between Tusculum and Mars Hill where um, but we've won a conference championship against this team uh, a couple of times in the last game. Then we changed the schedule up a little bit, but two teams were played Saturday. Haven't had a lot of success this season, probably doing a little soul-searching, but Mars Hill's going to come in here feeling real good about themselves with a big win against Wingate. Played very, very well against Wingate, scored a lot of points. Uh, Gave up some points. I think it was 52 to 42 or something like that. But uh, you know, Mars Hill is is probably so close to Tusculum right now. It's not funny. I mean, they're very athletic. They're very talented. They're making plays. They're shooting themselves in the foot. They're not doing everything right. Uh, but they found a way Saturday to get a win against a good Wingate football team. And and Wingate's you know I think four and five or something like that too. They're they're sort of poking along. But uh, the big thing was they found a way to win and. Unfortunately, both of us are playing to stay out of the bottom. I hate to admit that, but we are. And uh, Mars Hill coming here with a good football team. They'll come in here with a lot of energy. It's it's our senior day. We're going to be honoring right. some seniors on Saturday, and some some really good kids and some really good football players will be leaving us. And happy for all the kids and all the things that they've done for us. But the best thing we can do for them is to send them out with a winning note. So hopefully we can find a way to get a W. A couple of guys on this Mars Hill team worthy of noting: Troy Harris. I'm not sure anybody's been able to block him in the. In, the league player. as long as he's been. He's, he's a, a really good player. How do you contain him? Uh, he's a player. We'll, he'll make some plays. We, uh, we're going to make some plays too. He's going to make his share of plays. We just got to hopefully we can 
found a way to keep him away from us because he's a good player. All right, struggle against the run a little bit. And the uh, guy that can run, Shaq Davis, he's a little different. He's a little shifty back. He's a little, he reminds me somewhat of Kelvin Jeter that we just saw for Brevard. But uh, he's got the ability to take it to the house every time he touches it. Really good football player. Um, not as good as the one they had a few years ago, but uh, Tim always seems to have a good tailback. You know, yeah. and that's what they, they thrive on is giving the ball to the tailback. And, and then they little homes out there. The receivers are really good football players. As well, they throw them the football, and you know, the, Tim's done the same thing he's done for years, and he's going to do it again and again. And we got to be prepared defensively to stop it. And we got our hands full. It'll be an interesting game between the Pioneers and the Lions. And again, you can come join it. On Saturday, I'll have the Pioneer Peak Tailgate. It may be not quite as warm as it's been this season, but then again, it is the middle of November. So come bundled up, ready to watch some football. It's senior day. Bo Cordell playing in his final game in a Pioneer uniform. That'll be extremely emotional. A guy that's been here for five years and a guy who's already established the all-time passing mark in Division II. Like to see him go out on a winning note. Not just Bo Cordell, but a lot of guys. Brian Alexander establishing a new single season, a career record in tackles. And a guy that is chasing down the conference lead in tackles for the season. See if he can attain that. There's some things that are worthy coming out here to watch this Pioneer football team, but more importantly, they're just exciting to watch. Justin Houston, Bo Cordell, the running backs, and a defense that has been playing a little better this season as well. Come out and see it. Pioneers will kick it off at 1.30, and you can listen on the Pioneer Sports Network. AM 1450 WSMG begins coverage with our Pioneer kickoff show at 12.30. Kickoff is at 1.30, and it's also available on the World Wide Web through TusculumPioneers.com with video and audio. For Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, Perry Morgan, and Nathan Humbert, I'm Brian Staten. Until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk, featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by, you're in a Bojangles town, Greenville, home of the Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's boat time. Bojangles, title sponsor for the Frankie DeBus Show. Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, home of the big deal, located on the 11 e Bypass in Greenville. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Greenville Federal Bank, celebrating over 50 years of service in Greenville and Green County. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.